In this video, we report on the recent discovery of archaic hominid fossils from the site of Nesha Ramla in Israel, which was dated to 140,000 to 120,000 years ago. The fossils may be the last survivors of a missing type of extinct humans. Researchers say the Nesha Ramla hominid may have lived alongside Homo sapiens for over 100,000 years, and may have interbred with our species. But who was the Nesha Ramla hominid? Archaeologists have uncovered ancient remains that add new dimensions, and discovered a missing piece in the story of human evolution. The early humans, who had very large teeth and no chin, may have also been ancestors of the Neanderthals, challenging the current thinking that our big-headed evolutionary cousins originated in Europe. Homo sapiens are primates of the family Hominidae, and are the only living species of our genus. This lineage originated at least 200,000 years ago and has since spread to all corners of the world. But there are several mysterious skeletons from Mesopotamia that call into question the idea that Homo sapiens developed only in Africa. Moreover, our understanding of the origin, distribution, and evolution of early humans and their close relatives has been greatly refined by recent new information. Adding to this trend, Anthropologists in Israel have uncovered evidence of a previously unknown archaic population, what they call the Nesha Ramla hominid. The researchers presented comprehensive qualitative and quantitative analyses of fossilized remains, from a site in Israel dated to 140,000 to 120,000 years ago. This indicates the presence of a previously unrecognized group, representing the last surviving populations of Middle Pleistocene hominids in Europe, Southwest Asia and Africa. Anthropologists presented the radiometric ages, stone tool assemblages, faunal assemblages, and other behavioral and environmental data associated with these fossils. This evidence shows that these hominins had fully mastered technology, that until only recently was linked to either Homo sapiens or Neanderthals. Nesha Ramla hominid was an efficient hunter of large and small game. They were also using fire to cook their meals evident through the uncovering of a campfire the same age as the fossils. Indeed, the Nesha Ramla hominid were not only collecting wood to make campfires and cook, but also actively managing their fires as people do today. While the earliest indications of controlled use of fire is much older, perhaps one million years ago, the interesting thing about this particular campfire is the evidence that the Nesha Ramla people tended to it as carefully as Homo sapiens and Neanderthals did their own fires. Most impressive is that the campfire feature survived, intact, outside of a protected cave environment for so long. It is now the oldest intact campfire ever found in the open air. The findings provide archaeological support for cultural interactions between different human lineages during the Middle Paleolithic, suggesting that admixture between Middle Pleistocene hominids and Homo sapiens had already occurred by this time. It has long been believed that Neanderthals originated and flourished on the European continent. However, recent morphological and genetic studies have suggested that they may have received a genetic contribution from a yet unknown non-European group. Comprehensive analyses of the parietal bones, mandible, and lower second molar reveal that this group presents a distinctive combination of Neanderthal and archaic features. Today's video is sponsored by MyHeritage, one of the world's leading ancestry and genealogy companies. With MyHeritage you can discover new relatives you never knew you had. They are trusted by over 90 million users, and not only make building your family tree a simple and enjoyable activity, they also give you access to powerful tools that can help you research your family history and grow your tree. Furthermore, their animated photos feature applies realistic gestures to a face in your still photo, creating a short video that you can share with your friends and family. The software guides the movements in the animation so you can see your ancestors smile, blink and turn their heads. With the deep stories you can even hear your ancestor speak, which really brings your photos to life. Founder populations are people whose ancestors lived in the same region of the world for generations, so that their DNA is highly characteristic of the region. By testing the DNA of the participants in the project, MyHeritage established profiles for each region that reflect its unique DNA sequences. The result became a very rich and consistent reference of 42 founder populations, considered to be the best of its kind in the world. 
MyHeritage DNA uses this reference when analyzing your DNA to identify your ethnicity breakdown among these 42 ethnicities. MyHeritage.com is home to more than 18 billion easily searchable historical records as well as advanced AI technologies for repairing, enhancing, colorizing, and animating historical photos. Sign up for a 14-day free trial using the link in the description, and enjoy all the amazing features MyHeritage has to offer, and if you continue your subscription, you'll get a 50% discount. MyHeritage also gives you access to thousands of historical newspapers, census, marriage, and death records, immigration documents, and millions of other historical records which are easily searchable, even for beginners. The scientists suggest that these specimens represent the late survivors of a Levantine Middle Pleistocene Paleo community, that was most likely involved in the evolution of the Middle Pleistocene humans in Europe and East Asia. Recent excavations at the site of Nesha Ramla recovered a skull that may represent a late surviving example of a distinct Homo population that lived in and around the region from about 420,000 to 120,000 years ago. This ancient human community traded both their culture and genes with nearby Homo sapiens groups for many thousands of years. Pieces of a skull and an almost complete mandible were dated to 140,000 to 120,000 years old, with analysis finding the person it belonged to wasn't quite Homo sapiens. Nor were they Neanderthal, which was the only other type of human thought to have been living in the region at the time. Instead, this individual falls right in the middle a unique population of human never before recognized by science. Through detailed comparison with many other fossil human skulls, the researchers found the skull featured archaic traits that are substantially different from both early and recent Homo sapiens. In addition, the skull is considerably thicker than those found in both Neanderthals and most early Homo sapiens. The previously unknown group of ancient humans lived in what is now Israel, part of an ancient region known as the Levant, for hundreds of thousands of years. They lived alongside modern humans for some of that time, and the two groups may have interacted and learned skills from each other. The newly discovered people were the ancestors of the Neanderthals, argue the archaeological team behind the work. If that is true, Neanderthals originated in southwestern Asia, not in Europe as many researchers have previously suspected. The hominin remains were found at a quarry operated by a cement factory. Nesha Ramla was once a shallow depression in the landscape, that gradually filled with sediment. It was used by hominins for quite a long time, and it's very rich in terms of archaeological material and very well preserved. Our species had emerged in Africa by this time, and made some forays outside of the continent. Early Homo sapiens specimens from 210,000 years ago have been found in Greece, and a seemingly more sustained population existed in the Levant region from at least 177,000 years ago. But Homo sapiens wasn't the only hominin living on the planet at this time. Europe and Western Asia were home to the Neanderthals, while Eastern Asia was home to a related group called the Denisovans. To find out if the Nesha Ramla hominin belonged to one of these groups, the team compared the shapes of the bones with those of dozens of other hominin remains. It was easy to say that it's not Homo sapiens, because the skull was low and flat, rather than rounded and tall, and the jawbone lacked the chin that is characteristic of our species. But it didn't fit any of the other groups either. In some ways, the bones resembled Neanderthal bones but in others they looked like those of hominins that lived earlier in prehistory. The jaw displays archaic features, but also includes forms commonly seen in Neanderthals. The bones together reveal a unique combination of archaic and Neanderthal features, distinct from both early Homo sapiens and later Neanderthals. Moreover, the Nesha Ramla bones resemble several other hard-to-classify fossils, these include bones from the Kesem, Zutiye, and Taban sites in Israel, and from Atapuerca in northern Spain, some of which are considerably older. The archaeologists argue that all these bones should be considered together as a new hominin group, which lived in Western Asia between 420,000 and 120,000 years ago. The hominin at Nesha Ramla was a residue or survivor of this source population, they believe. 
the team hasn't given the group a species name, and simply calls them Nesha Ramla Homo, because the group says it doesn't like classing hominins as distinct species if they can interbreed. So they also wouldn't count Neanderthals as a distinct species. However, the Neanderthal-like features of Nesha Ramla Homo can be explained if they were the ancestors of the Neanderthals. On this account, the usual story of the origin of the Neanderthals, that they evolved from earlier European hominins, is incorrect. Instead, they originated in Western Asia as a subgroup of the Nesha Ramla hominid, and entered Europe only when the climate was favorable. But the morphological traits of Neanderthals could be easily interpreted as the movement of Neanderthals back to the Levant region, in which case, Nesha the Ramla hominid may have picked them up from Neanderthals, rather than the other way around. However, it would explain a mystery, a Neanderthal who lived in northern Europe 124,000 years ago had some Homo sapiens DNA, around 80,000 years before modern humans got there. This could be explained if modern humans interbred with the Nesha Ramla hominid in Western Asia, and some of the resulting hybrids interbred with European Neanderthals. The Nesha Ramla hominid may also explain other unusual fossils. The bones from the caves of Skul and Kafzeh in Israel have sometimes been classified as Homo sapiens, but don't look typical of our species. The team suggests they are actually the result of interbreeding between Homo sapiens and Nesha Ramla Homo. There is clear evidence that the Nesha Ramla hominid and Homo sapiens were interacting. They made very similar tools, using exactly the same process. This suggests that one group learned the skills from the other but we don't know who learned from who. The fossils found at other sites, including the famous Taban skull, dated to between 122,000 and 50,000 years old, might also be part of this new human population, in contrast to their previous Neanderthal or Homo sapiens identification. Extensively studied, this important specimen taught us much about Neanderthal anatomy and behavior in a time when very little was known about our enigmatic evolutionary cousins. If the Taban skull and others from the Kesem and Zutier caves were indeed members of the Nesha Ramla hominin group, this reanalysis would explain some inconsistencies in their anatomy, previously noted by researchers. The mysterious Nesha Ramla hominid may even represent our most recent common ancestor with Neanderthals. Its mix of traits supports genetic evidence that early gene flow between Homo sapiens and Neanderthals occurred between 400,000 and 200,000 years ago. In other words, interbreeding between the different Homo populations was more common than previously thought. The group of Homo sapiens that the Nesha Ramla people interacted with would have been closely related to Homo sapiens adultu, an extinct subspecies of Homo sapiens that lived approximately 160,000 years ago in Pleistocene Africa. Adultu comes from the Ethiopian word meaning eldest or firstborn. The skulls are also very large by human standards, suggesting the adults cut an imposing figure. The morphology of the skulls display archaic features not found in later Homo sapiens, but are still seen as the direct ancestors of modern Homo sapiens sapiens. Experts claim the finds are complete enough to be identified as early modern humans, since they show the characteristic globular shape of the brain case, and the facial features of our species. Both the adult skulls are huge and robust, but also show resemblances to more primitive African fossils. At the time of the discovery of the Herto Man was especially significant, since it was a period of human history about which we knew very little. The age of the fell within a long gap within the record of modern humans, dating from between 300,000 to 100,000 years ago. However, there are differences as well. Compared to the average present-day human skull, the Herto skull is notably long and has larger dimensions overall. In contrast, the cheekbones and parietal bones are relatively weak, though it does have a strongly flexed occipital bone at the base of the back of the skull. The brain of the Herto man was almost as large as modern Homo sapiens. Very similar to a modern human being, the Herto skull has a high cranial vault, encasing the brain. It had an overall globular shape from the side, with a relatively flat face. 
the brain volume was about 1,450 cubic centimeters, or 88 cubic inches. This places the size of Herto man's brain very close to that of modern Homo sapiens, with our brain volume of 1,500 cubic centimeters, or 92 cubic inches. Furthermore, the skull of Herto man is robust with a projecting brow ridge, a more archaic feature, 